far and wide kings would come to him to see him. And that's what happens with people when they get really rich. They start rubbing elbows with royalty. They start rubbing elbows with really high up there. They're, 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 they're up in the world, right? They're moving on up in the world. And this is exactly what Solomon experienced. Verse 9 says, So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom re remained with me. He continued to stay wise as he worked through all these things, as he toiled, as he, as he basically turned off the, the God switch and just became a carnal man. He succeeded and excelled very much at that. More than any that were before him, and the Bible records that it was more than any that were even after him. I believe God gave Solomon this special permit, this special window of time where he would become the greatest in the world in an answer to prayer right back in the beginning of the ministry was so that he could write a book like Ecclesiastes and show us that it is all vanity and vexation of spirit. He lived the dream. He had more than all. He was more than any before them. The Bible records he was more than any after him because after the kingdom split, right? There wasn't the same great kingdom. There wasn't the same great wealth since the days of Solomon. And I believe there never again shall be until the Lord comes. So he had all of these things. Verse 10 says, Whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. So there it is. There's the fruit of his labor, the portion of all of his labors, was that he was able to give his eyes whatsoever they desired. He was able to give his heart whatever joy it desired. He was able to do whatever he felt like as the fruits of his own labors. He worked the American dream and he succeeded at the American dream and he rejoiced in it all right up until the end. But then he looked. Verse 11 says, I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold... All was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. Solomon had it all. He had the dream. He had what every man desires after, what every man lusts after, craves after. When we think in our heart, what does my heart want? Solomon had it. When I see with my eyes, and I'm like, what do my eyes desire? Solomon had it. He had everything that a man could lust after and want. And yet when he looked back upon it all, he didn't say it was great. It was awesome being that rich. It was awesome having this influence. It was awesome being this wise. He looked upon his works and he said, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. Right. There is no prophet under the sun. Amen. None. Amen. Amen. He looked, he realized vanity, vexation, just as the Lord said. He said, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? That's right. His relationship with God, his, his stance with God, his position with his Savior, that switch that he turned, had he turned it back, was more valuable than anything he could find under the sun in this world. And he had everything, everything that a man could want. Everything that a young child looks up and says, man, that's what I'm going to be when I grow up. He had it all. Vanity. Vexation of spirit. There's nothing to profit of it. That's right. Amen. Amen. Mark 8, verse 36. What shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? That soul is more valuable. That soul and its relationship with Christ. That soul and its unity with the spirit is of much value. And that is the answer that I believe God opened up the window of opportunity for Solomon to turn that switch, to become carnal, to become successful as a carnal man. He made that opportunity, that provision available so that he could take that scripture in Mark 8, verse 36 and answer it. What shall it profit a man? Nothing. What shall it profit a man? Nil. And compared to having his soul saved, Amen. he loses that, he's lost it all. Amen. He's taking none of it with him. You've never seen a hearse pulling a U-Haul. You've never seen people with all their possessions and taking them to the graveyard. Do you know what happens? They leave it unto another. And that's it. They're gone. If they have their soul, Christ has it, they have everything. Yeah. If they don't, they got nothing. 